Welcome back to the Ancestral Findings Podcast. From the verdant plains of Maryland emerges the tale of Thomas Stone, a man of intellect, ambition, and unwavering love. Navigating law, agriculture, and politics with finesse, Stone's life paints a rich history of dedication to country and family. Today, we uncover the layered narrative of Thomas Stone, a patriot and family man whose life resonates with commitment and affection. Thomas Stone was born in 1743 in Charles County, Maryland at the family home of Poynton Manor. He was the second son in a large family and grew up with many siblings. His parents were David Stone and Elizabeth Jennifer. David was a descendant of William Stone, who had been governor of Maryland during the English protectorate of Oliver Cromwell during the English Civil War. As a child, Thomas showed an excellent aptitude for and interest in languages and learning in general. When he was 15 years old, he was already a master of English and wished to learn Latin and Greek. Though his father was not fond of the idea, Thomas convinced him to allow him to attend a school 10 miles away from his home, operated by a Scottish man named Mr. Blaisdell, to learn these languages. Thomas's enthusiasm for learning these languages was so strong that he did not mind getting up at an unusually early hour to ride a horse the 10 miles to the school and arrived at school at its usual starting time with remarkable consistency. After graduating from Mr. Blaisdell's school, Thomas wished to study law. Though his father was wealthy, he did not pay his son's way through his law studies as he had a large family to support. So Thomas had to borrow money to get him through his law studies. Thomas put himself under the tutelage and care of Thomas Johnson, a well-respected lawyer in Annapolis. After studying with Thomas Johnson, Thomas was admitted to the bar and entered into his law practice in Fredericktown, Maryland. After practicing there for two years, Thomas moved to Charles County, Maryland and entered into law practice there. The law business he established in Fredericktown allowed him to discharge the debts he incurred while studying law. Thus, financially secure, Thomas married at age 28 to Margaret Brown, the daughter of a prominent local doctor named Gustavus Brown, who was said to be the wealthiest man in the county then. Margaret's father gave Thomas 1,000 pounds sterling upon his marriage to his daughter. Thomas used this money to buy a farm near the village of Port Tobacco. He, Margaret, and their three children, two daughters and a son, lived there during the American Revolution. As revolutionary sentiment grew stronger in Maryland, Thomas joined the Charles County Committee of Correspondence. Thomas was a member of Maryland's Annapolis Convention from 1774 to 1776. In 1775, Thomas was sent by the convention, sent Thomas to the Continental Congress as a delegate from Maryland. Thomas was a famous delegate there among the people back home in Maryland, and as such, he was re-elected for several appointments to Congress. Thomas voted to draft a Declaration of Independence in May of 1776. This was despite the restrictions the Maryland Convention imposed on its delegates to prevent them from supporting independence. This restriction was lifted in June of that year after Thomas had already supported it. Before voting in favor of drafting a Declaration of Independence, Thomas had favored the colonies having open diplomatic relations with Great Britain to not go to war and have peaceful relations with them. This was because Thomas was a pacifist and conservative who was reluctant to allow the colonies to take on the human and financial cost of war. The same year that Thomas signed the Declaration of Independence, the Congress assigned him to the committee that drafted the Articles of Confederation, which was to be the initial governing document of the new nation the Congress was building. Though they did not know at the time that it would only be a temporary document that a constitution would later replace. Thomas's wife, Margaret, visited him in Philadelphia at this time as his work on the Congress kept him away from home for long stretches of time, and she missed him. Unfortunately, there was a smallpox epidemic in Philadelphia at the time she visited. She received a smallpox inoculation upon arriving, but she had an adverse reaction to it, which caused her health to decline for the rest of her life. Therefore, after signing the Declaration of Independence, Thomas took Margaret home. After this, he stayed away from the Congress, devoting his time to caring for Margaret and their children, 
except for a brief time in 1784, when the meetings of the Continental Congress were temporarily held in Annapolis, Maryland, which was close to where he lived, meaning he could go home to Margaret every day after Congress adjourned for the evening. Thomas stayed in Maryland with Margaret, accepting election to the Maryland Senate from 1779 to 1785. While in the Senate in Maryland, Thomas promoted the Articles of Confederation, which Maryland became the last state to approve. Despite continuing his political activities, Thomas gave up his law practice to devote more time to caring for Margaret. The more Margaret's health declined, the more Thomas withdrew from public life altogether. Margaret passed away in 1787 at approximately 38 years old. Thomas, who was devoted to her, became depressed and passed away himself only four months after her, supposedly of a broken heart. Thomas and Margaret's children were all teenagers when they lost their parents. Thomas was buried at his plantation home, which still stands today and can be visited. Thomas's house and plantation stayed in his family for five generations. In 1936, it was sold in a private purchase. The home's primary structure was severely damaged by a fire in 1977. After this, the National Park Service purchased the property and restored it to its original appearance. It was opened to the public in 1997 as the Thomas Stone National Historic Site and is owned and operated by the National Park Service. The house and museum are located in Port Tobacco Village, Maryland. Thank you for joining us today on the Ancestral Findings podcast. For additional resources and exclusive treats, visit ancestralfindings.com. You can grab a complimentary genealogy ebook, benefit from a free genealogy lookup, and even participate in our weekly historical postcard giveaway. It's a treasure trove for every family history enthusiast. Your support by listening to the podcast means the world to me. If you want to support us in more ways, consider supporting us on Patreon or PayPal. Every contribution aid in delivering valuable content and continuing our free genealogy lookup service. From all of us at Ancestral Findings, thank you for being an integral part of our family history community since 1995. I hope you have a wonderful day and as always, happy searching.